So what do we have in store for today? Well, we have this brand new 2022 Ram 1500 in for our new car prep and ceramic coatings. So the Ram came in yesterday. It's brand new, but it's pretty dirty. And that's because the owner has not washed it, which is a good thing because sometimes when customers wash their own cars, it can be problematic. There can be swirls and things like that. And the customer was very good about not doing that to his brand new truck. So he trusted us to take care of it. So we're going to wash it, we're going to polish it, and we're going to protect it with a two year coating. I'm gonna show you around the truck in just a moment, but if you are enjoying these videos, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And any of the products will be listed down below and the tools. And if you go to Car Supplies Warehouse to shop for any of those products or tools, use code Miranda10, you'll get 10% off. So it is a bright sunny day and it's already pretty hot and humid out. So we're going to uh, get working on this as quickly as I can, but I wanna show you around the vehicle. And uh, as we look around, you can see it's pretty dirty and basically it just it does sit outside and uh, went through a couple of rainstorms so it definitely is dirty got some bugs in the front here that we're going to tackle with the hyper clean bug lightly rinse it because it is kind of hot out and then i'm going to foam the entire thing down start on the wheels and tires first and i know i know you say you don't do that no i didn't i didn't say that i actually will swap uh, doing wheels first or body first depending on the situation since it's my wife and I working here We can work quickly around the vehicle So it doesn't matter if I do wheels first or not. It's just in this case But you can do that also you can pick and choose when you need to do things at any given moment Remember there's no rules when it comes to detailing like this things are fluid. They're flexible You can change on the fly according to certain situations So keep that in mind if you are a mobile guy and you're working on hot vehicles it's probably not a good idea to start on the body work first and then do the wheels and tires. So in that case, you do the wheels and tires first. But if you have two people, it doesn't matter. You can just do the whole thing all at the same time. One person's doing one thing, the other person's doing the other. So it doesn't matter at that point. Detailing is about problem solving. It's about figuring things out and not putting yourself in a box when it comes to rules like that. Follow certain procedures and certain protocols for your own company, for your own business, but make sure to be flexible also. Now this is a beautiful blue metallic, and after we pull it in, we'll inspect the paint and see how bad it is. But it is brand new. I'm not expecting to really see anything out of the ordinary. You can see it's got some light swirling and some water spotting, but that could just be on the surface, so we'll see. So let's go ahead and start rinsing, and then we'll foam the whole thing. Now true, the high alkaline foaming pre-wash may actually get rid of these bugs. And usually it would, but in this case I'm using this bug remover because, well one, I have it in stock, so I'm going to use it. But usually high alkaline pre-wash or your APC rinse is also going to demolish these bugs. But usually dedicated bug removers will have some sort of an enzyme in it that dissolves bugs easily and it just makes the job uh, that much more easier, but that much more easier. There are dedicated cleaners for things that you want, but test them out first. See if you actually need it because sometimes certain APCs and pre-washes and cleaners do just as well. I need another hand. <laughs> Awkward. Very awkward. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're gonna let that dwell on there and let's get to these tires and wheels. And if you see, whoa. And if you do have some thin spots, just go back around the vehicle like this, like we're gonna do. Okay, all right. Wow, that's, that's. Mm-hmm. I only mixed one ounce with 32 ounces of water in that foam cannon and that seems to be pretty good.
So the pre-wash did a great job of, of course, pre-cleaning the paint, getting the majority of junk off the paint, and I can already see, yeah, it did a great job. There's no heavy water spots like I saw before. And so if you wanna see some videos on pre-washing, I'll link them down below and I'll put one of them, the updated one, up in the corner because um, you know we, we can switch up our pre-washing methods, whether using an APC rinse cleaner like we usually do, or using the IK Foamer, or this way of doing it with an actual foam cannon. Do whichever one works for you. Just remember water consumption, remember heat, and direct contact with the sun and, and you know and, and sunlight like that so um, the paint can get hot. So keep all those things in mind and decide which is best for you. So washing is now done. The paint was so smooth. I really just went over it quickly with the clay mitt, but even all the way to the bottom, there's no clay barring to be done because it's so smooth. And don't worry about having to use a decon, an iron decon all the time, or a tar remover all the time. You use those products when needed. I don't care what anyone says, just because you're doing this full service, you should just use it anyway, no. That's not smart business. So do what is needed. Don't do things arbitrarily. That's like a doctor performing other procedures on you that are not needed, but you, hey, you figured, hey, I'm in here. Might as well do that. No, that's not how things work. That's not proper to do. So with your detailing business, you choose what you need to do to get the end result for your customer. It's not about showing off to other detailers. I think that's where a lot of detailers get stuck or they get boxed in or they get into this mindset where they have to do certain things to appease other detailers. No, we're not doing this for other detailers. We're doing this for our customers. So you must keep that in mind. Ignore what other detailers say about your business. You can choose to, you know, kind of copy or take lessons from other detailers and learn from them, yes. But some detailers are out there just to kind of push rules and push their own agenda and show off and that's where your you know, ego comes into play and, and that's, that has no place here. This is a detailing business and that's it. Yes, we like to show what we're doing and show the results because it's satisfying, it's nice to see, it's awesome, uh, but in the end, that's for the customer. So we're not gonna be doing things that are not needed like taking off all the wheels and doing all these extra things that you see other detailers doing for their services, that's, that's cool, that's their services. But don't do things like that if you are not getting paid for them because then you're losing money, you're losing time. I know it's nice to do that and you feel accomplished, but once again, if you're a business doing this, keep it business. Don't go into the enthusiast realm because that's when enthusiasts and, and other types of you know detailers like that can go the extra mile because they enjoy it, because they love it. That's cool, that's good for them. But remember, if you're a detailing business, do things with a business mindset. Why is he anxious? She just wants to get this thing in there.
So we just finished blow drying everything as much as we can, and even though we try to get everything, there's still gonna be some water that seeps out somewhere once you start polishing. It's, it's kind of inevitable, but that's okay. Just learn to deal with it. So as we take a look at the paint, I do see a few little things on here. As far as swirls go, really nothing to speak of. There were a few bug etchings up here that we're going to just polish away that should be fine. So sometimes those bugs, if they're there too long, then it can etch into the clear coat and it'll need some heavy compounding to get out. But as far as swirls, yeah, not really, not really bad at all. Oh, there's a little, yeah, there's a little imperfection right there, a little scratching of some sort. Ignore some of the little drips and little smears that might be just from drying. Uh, just, that was just my finger right there that I just swiped it. Really not a ton. There's a little bit of wash marring down here, you can see. And we have some more swirls back here. Again, not not major. So that's the great part about working on a brand new vehicle is you're not dealing with heavy swirls. However, with brand new vehicles, you want to try to get as much out as possible. Um, because again, it's a brand new vehicle and the customer expects it to be nearly 100%. That has to do with communicating with your customer. Make sure to communicate very well with your customer. Inform them. You always find something on the vehicle. There's always something that needs some polishing. Oh, there's something right here. There's a hazy spot. You can see right there. That looks like it was probably some denibbing or maybe a light scratch or something that somebody polished out. And actually, that doesn't look like rotary. It looks like a dual action polisher haze, but they, they never finished it out. We'll tackle these. These always have, oh, there's some deep imperfections. Oh, man. I don't know if those will come out completely. We'll see. So what we're gonna use on this are the NSP polishes. 45, which is their fine. We have their 95, which is their medium. So we'll be using those, most likely with the Orange Lake Country pads, which is our go-to. That's kind of our favorite combo. Working with these Dr. Beasley's polishes, these NSP polishes, that stands for Nano Surface Primer, um, is using the least amount of product and working it longer than usual. Now, you can work this until it almost becomes dry and it kind of uh, dissipates on the panel. Um, it, it takes a while to do that. You don't have to 100% go to that you know, uh, level. I will work it until it looks fairly dry, like it looks like it's, it's kind of worked into the paint and then the wipe off is, is decent. Sometimes it still might be a little smeary, but don't worry about that. We'll talk about that later when we uh, start to actually apply the ceramic coating because you don't have to do a panel wipe, you simply go right over the paint with your coating, any ceramic coating, and it'll bond and it'll take away any of that smearing. That goes away. And the surface will be left incredibly clean, crystal clear. You won't have to worry about any smearing or hazing or anything like that or the residue coming back. Um, sometimes you get that with these, with these polishes. So less is more. In this case, work it for a lengthy period of time. But just remember to use a little bit of the product. You don't have to use a ton of it. Work it, baby, work it. Exactly.
All right, so the polishing is all done now on the paint. I still have to do the glass here, the windshield. See, there's sometimes little buggers like that. They kind of etched into the glass and didn't clean off. So the polishing of the glass will remove that and remove anything that's on the glass. It kind of deep cleans the pores of the glass. You don't want to use the NSP polishes on the glass. I just didn't find them to work really well on that. Too smeary, doesn't really work well. It's designed for paint, not glass. And check this out. Oh, much better. Look, the deep scratches are kind of still there. You can kind of see it with the camera. With the naked eye, you, you can barely pick it up. But it's way, way better. Something happened on this pillar and it was it was pretty pretty deep so and a little bit of that hazing is just from the nsp polish that that will go away once it's coated and it'll look great there are some little imperfections in my lens that keep flaring the light like that so that's that's what that is when you see that it's the light flaring off of little imperfections on the lens unfortunately so yeah sometimes that happens RAM is done and it is looking fantastic. Now I'm going to finish up uh, touching up the glass tomorrow. I usually do that uh, after everything is all cured and everything because sometimes there's some smudges and smears in the glass and it's just annoying to go back over it and I don't want to touch the paint so I'll leave that till tomorrow. But all of the coatings are on the paint, the wheels, the trim, the glass, everything is looking incredible and this blue Man, this blue metallic is beautiful. Now, I forgot to film this, but basically it's just tedious to get in here with the applicator. Um, now, you know, when it comes to doing grills like this, do you have to get all the way in there? For me, I don't. It, it's a little ridiculous because you really can't get all the way inside there. Get, get the surface areas here as much as you can. So I basically went over it with the applicator, getting into all the little areas, and then go back with a light and plenty of towels and get all of the residue and smearing off of the chromes and plastics. It's just tedious. So don't worry about having to get in like, I mean, there's hollow spaces back here. It's just the front face of the grill. So it's not like you're trying to get inside there because that's where the radiator is and other stuff. So just get all the surface that you can and don't go crazy trying to get behind stuff because you don't need to. It's, it's a grill and the 
radiator and other parts are behind there anyway, so you don't need to be going crazy. Unless the customer is paying for that, go nuts. Spend hours on it if you want. But, you know, you determine that for yourself. Now, when it comes to double checking ceramic coatings, I'm going to give you just a couple of tips as to what areas to look out for because these are often, at least for me, some, some of these areas I sometimes miss and I have to go back over them and make sure. This right here, this area right here is weird because there's no lights really facing directly on this. So you really have to turn your head and, you know, put the light over here to make sure. Sometimes you're wiping this area and the towel just kind of grazes over this area and will leave a little bit of a high spot. So make sure to check these areas here. Again, even coating in here, I'm not worried about that. You can't coat inside there either. You can't coat all of inside here. You just can't get into there. So don't don't worry about that. If you want to remove the bed and get in there, you know, be my guest. Do that. But just remember to be reasonable. And even let the customer know, like, I can't get all the way in there coating it. I just can't. So you can use a spray uh, and rinse off type of coating. That's totally fine. It's still going to protect it. But you can't even clean down there anyway. So these are areas that you have to be reasonable on. And, and not go crazy. Um, another area is around the door handles, above and below the door handles and inside there. That's an area you wanna double check. Underneath the mirror here is often an area that is missed. This area anyway is kind of a weird conglomeration of all the panels put together and your towel may not grab everything. So grab your light and go back over this with a third towel after everything is done and make sure that it's all good and everything is wiped away. Another area, so see this little divot in here? Make sure to get your towel in there and below these and inside here around the emblems is gonna be tricky. So make sure that you're checking with your lights and double checking all around there with your towel. The ridge here also, and any of where the panels meet like this, these little gaps, check that with your towel and make sure with your lights also, these weird little gaps here also, um, you have to actually curve your fingers in there with the towel to wipe it. Make sure that you're doing that. Same with back here, you have all these little ridges and pieces. So check with your lights and make sure that there's no high spots around there. And this little weird ridge here inside can be hard to kind of see and get your towel in there. This tailgate actually has a lot of curvature. You have this curve here, this curve here, then it's flat, then this curve, and then it curves in again, all along the bottom. So that can be a tough piece to see because of all the curvature. So again, grab your light and look all around these areas and make sure that you got all of your coating uh, removed. Actually, look, see right there? Look, that's a high spot. Let me grab my final wipe. Going back over the vehicle multiple times is just what you gotta do and make sure that you get all these little areas. I probably wouldn't have seen that if I didn't come down here at this angle. See, right there and right there. And when it comes to coating this, don't smush the coating into the emblem. Go all around it, go over it. Don't smush it into the areas because you're never gonna get all that out. It's gonna be extremely tedious and if left in there, it'll leave an ugly little coating high spot inside the emblem. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that you just go around it and over it and you'll be good to go. All right, all right, we're getting there. Yeah, see how tedious these emblems can be? Yup, okay, this is good. And I coated this about an hour ago. So with most coatings, if you catch it within the hour, or even within a few hours, then you'll be good. All right, I think we're looking good now. Cool, so I'll have to go back over it when I'm done filming here and just make sure I have all of these emblems nice and clean. It's looking good though. So walk around the vehicle a few times and keep looking. Grab your light and keep looking, keep looking, go all around it. You're gonna find some high spots somewhere. That's just what happens. So as a detailer, be vigilant and looking around, checking with your lights and grabbing your towels and making sure that you're getting all those little areas. So even though we have the AC cranking in here, the humidity today is just rough. We're trying to not open these doors at all. We have our door right here. Um, we don't want to open the garage door. We don't want to open those shades when that sun comes in. It's just 
unbearable. It is relatively cool in here and relatively dry. Just when you start moving and working around, you, you start to overheat a little bit, and that's just what happens. But this one is done, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. If you are interested in any of the products or the tools, don't forget to check the links down below and use code Miranda10 at Car Supplies Warehouse to get 10% off. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.